Hey, is your name Pete too? Cause it's time for Heat 2! Alrighty everybody, welcome to Heat 2 road course portion here at Road America. You can see most of the grid right now, but let's go to the grid graphic again. Yeah, uh, no. No grid graphic. Just uh, move those bottom five up, put Susan Collins at the back, and there's your grid. And to give the command to start engines, please welcome world-famous celebrity, Carnation. I don't mean to get political or anything, but senators, start your engines. All right, everybody's getting ready to go. One, two, three, four, five lights. We're going racing on the sound of the tone. Tom Cotton gets away well. James Lankford does as well. Generally, with these AI drivers, they tend to get off the line pretty evenly. Looks like a decent start from Ed Markey. But no, Mike Crapo, not Crapo, it's Mike Crapo, chops off his nose. But it's Tom Cotton leading James Lankford into turn one. Mike Crapo following behind. It looks like Ed Markey got very wide. He's going to lose a position to John Barrasso. But if you remember last year, Corey, Mike Crapo, Crapo, Barrasso, those guys, they didn't even make it to turn one on the oval. But luckily, the drivers seem a little bit more sane on the road course this year. So here comes James Lankford trying to get past Tom Cotton on the fourth corner of the race. And it looks like he's already clear. That's going to put Cotton under pressure for Mike Crapo. Oh, but Crapo's going to switch back. He's going to go to the inside. Tom Cotton seemingly has fallen from first to third. No, he sweeps around the outside, but he's going to be able to hold it. Oh, Barrasso and Markey hit each other somehow. And now Crapo finally clears Cotton. So right now, Lankford is just going to try and run away as it looks like there may have been a little bit of contact. I think Ed Markey might have just gone off. Oh, did you see John Barrasso spun back there? Let's go to a replay there. We can find the Ed Markey crash. It looks like a bunch of drivers. John Ossoff, a whole bunch of drivers in the back have run into each other as well. A chaotic first lap after we saw a pretty clean one last time. Desperately trying to look for a replay of the Ed Markey crash, but whilst we do that, let's take a look at James Langford in the lead, trying to pull away from Mike Crapo already. Mike Crapo, James Langford, pretty even, even drivers. They got a pretty even skill level. All right, I believe we have found the replay of the John Barrasso crash. Let's take a look. No, we haven't. I think it's lost to time. We'll never know how Ed Markey crashed, or will we? Oh, that's before. Let's do a little bit of a cheeky rewind here. And let's take a look in a book. Reading Rainbow. Oh, he was sitting in the gravel for a long time. Oh, no. That's not what you like to see. John Barossa just bonk, bonk, bonk. And those are concrete walls, Corey. There's no cushioning there. Back up front, James Lankford. It looks like we've lost Michael Bennett, Jackie Rosen, and Tom Carper as well in a race of drama and chaos. But up front, you can see Mike Crapo in the draft of James Langford. He's probably not going to be able to make a move going into turn one. But if he can get in the draft, turn four will be a very real possibility for a move. Corey, how are you feeling about this lead battle? Uh, I think Crapo's got this on lock. The giraffe is too strong. The giraffe, you say? Yes, the giraffe. The giraffe. I don't know if there is a zoo in the entire state of Wisconsin. Maybe there is. As it looks what? like Tammy Baldwin has gone off. It's a very... Why, why do you think these drivers are making so many mistakes? We didn't see this many crashes in the first heat. Well, we have some lower rated you know, guys. Or, you know, uh, and Ron Wyden and Bob Casey have crashed as well. No. It never ends, does it? As the leaders are going side by side, Mike Crapo trying to go around the outside of James Langford, but Langford chops him off. And that's going to allow oh, no. Tom Cotton to go back to second place, is it? Yes, it is. Tom Cotton back in second, as we only have 14 cars running now. Absolute chaos here at Road America. I think we're going to have a replay of Ben Ray Lujan crashing once this lead battle sorts itself out. Yeah, it looks like they'll be going one by one through the carousel. It gives us a chance to look 
And what happened to Ben Ray Lujan? He is in that blue and blue car. The light blue car. New senator from New Mexico, Tammy Baldwin. Oh, he just clipped Tammy, I think. That is unfortunate for Ben Ray Lujan. In his first race of the Senate race, out on just a little tippy tap. But let's go back up front. James Langford actually pulling away down the back stretch. Tom Cotton might have Mike Crapo to worry about more than he's, James Langford's going to worry about him. And I wonder if this battling will allow Richard Blumenthal to catch this pack. But Langford blocks the inside. Cotton ch almost chops off the nose of Mike Crapo. That was a dangerous maneuver. But we got one more time around, and I think Tom Cotton will have a chance to go for the move into turn one here. Corey, do you think he'll be able to pull it off? Uh, no. You don't think he'll be able to pull it off? No, I think he will. No, no, no. Langford's got her on lock. With only three tenths between them, but Langford pulls out of the draft early to make sure Tom Cotton doesn't get a draft. But I think the momentum might be enough. You can see the gap going down up there. It's about to go below one-tenth. A very fast lap for Tom Cotton, actually. But here comes Cotton to the outside. Can he pull it off? No. Langford chops off his nose. A lot of nose chopping going on today. There is, but that's how you got to defend, clearly. But this Republican 1-2-3, very, very close as we go down this straight for the final time. Could they encounter that lap car? That's Martin Heinrich. He was involved in an early crash. These drivers are much, much higher rated than Martin. They could theoretically catch him, and lap traffic could play a role before the end of this race. As Mike Crapo thinks about sending it three wide, thinks better of it. Cotton's got the outside. Langford's got the inside. Who's going to be later on the brakes? It looks like they're pretty even. Langford holds true, but Cotton around the outside is able to hold the lead, but Lankford's going to have the inside here. Is he going to hold the lead? Cotton's still side by side with them. That's right, they make contact. Tom Cotton goes off in the grass. Is he going to hit Mike Crapo? No. He big, saves it. Big opportunity taken by Mike out here. Tom Cotton just a little bit over aggressive, and he got on the grass. That's going to promote Mike Crapo. Crapo to second. <laughs> and I tell you what, lap traffic is going to play a role. We got Josh Hawley up there, too. Hawley and Heinrich are focused on their own battle for 24th and 25th. <laughs> as the lap cars seem to be shuffling around, as a couple drivers seem to be coming back into the pits for some reason. But there's the lap cars! I, are they getting blue flags? Is this going to rob James Langford of the race? Mike Crapo sneaks through Martin Heinrich. I think that screwed up James Langford. That definitely slowed him down, but can Mike Crapo take advantage? He's going to go to the outside. Will he be able to sweep around the outside here at Canada Corner? Will it be Crapo? Will it be Lankford? Will it be Cotton if they come together? Oh, Mike Crapo goes wide. Mike Crapo. That was his chance and he did not take advantage of it. I think James Lankford now has this in the bag. He's just going to drive away. Now looking for Cotton. Can Cotton come back on Crapo? I don't think he'll be able to. I think it's going to be an easy victory for James Lankford. The lap traffic actually played into his hands. That's not always the case. It looks like we'll have a little bit of a close battle. I don't think Cotton has enough to get by Crapo at the line. But we'll see. Mike Crapo finishes second. I'm James Lankford. Tom Cotton is third. Richard Blumenthal comes home fourth. And the rookie, Tommy Tuberville, will come home fifth. Followed by Chris Van Hollen. Amy Klobuchar finishes seventh. Mark Warner of Virginia will finish eighth. Another rookie. Here he comes. Roger Marshall of Kansas will come home ninth. And Marco Rubio of Florida will come home in the 10th position eventually. Marco Rubio. Despite only having a 52% rating. Yep. In a race of attrition, we lost a lot of high-rated cars. Marky. Carper. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> Marky Carper, pretty high rated. Uh, Bob Casey, not too high rated, but he's still pretty strong. But wow, a race of attrition. And James Lankford takes advantage. Alright, welcome to the oval portion of Heat 2. Let's take a look at the grid. You know the drill. Just replace me with Susan Collins. 
And to give the command to start engines, please welcome the man behind the crystal ball himself, Larry Sabato. Hello, I'm Larry Sabato, director of the Center for Politics at the University of Virginia. Senators, start your engines. All right, those engines have started. Thank you, Larry. Corey, take a look in your crystal ball. Who do you think is going to win this? Langford. All right, as we exit turn four, Chris Van Hollen. His last name is Van Hollen, not Holland, despite what the graphics want you to think. Will he be able to hold on? we got two red cars up front. The green flag is in the air. And we're going racing once again at Homestead. Chris Van Hollen, a much better start than James Langford. And he's going to not even try to defend the bottom. He's just going to let Tom Cotton slip and slide right down in there. If Tom Cotton actually takes it. Does he have the momentum to do so? He does. Tom Cotton goes to the lead early on. He's bringing Mike Crapo with him. It looks like we're getting a little bit of field spread already. You see Gary Peters, Josh Hawley falling off the back. Or rather, Marco Rubio. Remember, he got a point in the last race. Doesn't look like he's going to replicate that. But you see in the Tide Pod car there, about two rows back, that's Dick Durbin. Senate is the, the whip for the Democrats. And in that multicolored car, he is moving forward. But right now, Chris Van Hollen is your leader. But Mike Crapo is going down to the inside. He's bringing Tom Cotton with him, and it looks like Mike Crapo will be your new leader as Chris Van Hollen falls back. Here comes John Barrasso to the bottom. Remember, John Barrasso got crashed out on the road portion, so he needs a good race here today. He wants any chance of moving on to the finals. And to the bottom, Richard Blumenthal! Richard Blumenthal with a big send. He's made up 11 places already. And he is going to take the leader, is he? Because here comes Ed Markey. Another driver who got crashed out in the last race. And we will be going four wide. Amy Klobuchar thinks about making it five wide. But there just isn't any room for that, Amy. And John Barrasso almost turns down into Richard Blumenthal. Luckily, they managed to keep out of each other's way. But new leader is Ed Markey momentarily as Rick Blumenthal's taking it back on the top and Amy Klobuchar is going to look to the bottom will she send it? No! Amy Klobuchar did not use any aggression there she's just happy to stick behind maybe wait for a crash up front which is a very real possibility as our pole sitter Chris Van Hollen has fallen to the back of this lead pack we see Tom Carper catching Tammy Baldwin as well. Brief graphical glitch. We'll probably see that once a race again. It waited longer than we normally expect. But it's gone now as Amy Klobuchar has taken the lead. Remember, Amy Klobuchar just missed out in the finals last year. Can she make it this year? To the bottom, Mark Warner. Are we going to be four wide? That's going to be very close between Klobuchar and Lankford. A Klobuchar still hanging on. A very strong performance up front from Amy Klobuchar. The Klob Mob is powering her forward. And she's going to lead this lap, or is she? No, James Lankford takes advantage of a little bit of side draft to lead that lap. A Klobuchar will have the bottom. Where is he? Carper! Carper and Casey! Carper and Casey just hit each other a little bit. They're still rolling somehow. Just a little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. Nothing too bad. Here comes Mark Warner again to the bottom of Amy Klobuchar. Trying to find a way by again. See the back of this pack. Roger Marshall is joining the race as well. The pack is expanding with every lap. But Warner and Klobuchar still side by side. Doesn't look like Warner wants to leave the bottom. We'll see what happens if we exit turn four. No. Mark Warner does actually go a little bit high. That's going to allow Tommy Tuberville, the football coach, to send it to the bottom. Into turn one. Oh, is he going to make it? That's going to be close with Mark Warner's front wheel. They do make it. Against all odds. Josh Hawley is not the leader. Tommy Tuberville. No, Mark Warner's the leader now. As the two black cars are going side by side. James Langford trying to look for a way through the middle. He's not going to find it. But Mike Crapo and John Barrasso are. This is going to be close. Crapo and Tuberville on the bottom. Almost intersecting wheels. Luckily, they... Did not, and Tommy Tuberville continues to hold up front as Richard Blumenthal 
is going to look for a gap through the middle as they're four wide. Tammy Baldwin in fifth. Desperately looking for a way by. I don't think she will as we go four wide again. The Republicans on the bottom have not been very kind to each other, but they still are not hitting each other. They're leaving each other enough room. Corey, are you surprised that we haven't seen a crash yet? Uh, I don't know. It seems to be pretty clean racing pretty on the oval previously, so we're seeing it again. Clean racing other than when Bob Casey and Tom Carper hit each other, but right now, Tuberville and Crapo are in a little bit of a holding pattern. doesn't look like they are going to leave each other. It looks like they're happy to run one and two, because if they run one and two, both of them will advance to the finals. But we got one more lap, and our pole sitter, Chris Van Hollen, is back on the scene. Through the middle comes Ed Markey. He's going to get very close to Tom Cotton there. He keeps it rolling. Tuberville still not ditching the bottom. Richard Blumenthal desperate to find a way by on the top. I'm not so sure that he will. Bob Casey goes very high to send it four wide. I think this race might be over between Crapo and Tuberville, but we'll see. Can Richard Blumenthal pull anything off here? Blumenthal has a good entry to the corner, but he's going to fall back. John Barrasso sends it four wide. I'm not sure that's the best move. As we come to the line, it looks like it'll be between Crapo and Tuberville. Who's it going to be? The football coach or the Idahoan? Mike Crapo wins at Homestead. Langford somehow all the way back in 10th. Yeah, That's not a great race from Langford. And I don't think Amy Klobuchar will have enough points to move on. But we'll add together the totals and we will tell you who will be moving on to the finals from Group 2. Going forward to the finals, Mike Crapo, 43 points. Tommy Tuberville, 28 points. James Langford, 26 points. Richard Blumenthal, 24 points. And Tom Cotton, 19 points. Those are your five finalists from Group 2.